Hello and welcome to T3 Day 1 of Honors Precalculus. Today we're going to start talking about circles and ellipses. So we're going to talk about conic sections and they are a cross section of a cone. And you see the four types here. First, there's a parabola, which is what you get when you cut a cone at an angle. So you get this shape right there. There's a parabola, which we've seen before, things of the form y equals x squared. And then you get circles like this one right here if you make the cut parallel to the base. And then you get an ellipse if you cut all the way through and it doesn't go off the edge like it does in a parabola. You get an ellipse like this. And then you get a hyperbola, hyperbola if you cut parallel to the uh, straight up and down orientation of the cone. So let's talk about the first type here, a circle. So a circle is a set of all points equidistant from a given point called the center. Center, center, center. Find an equation for the set of all points x, y that are equidistant from a given point h, k. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to use the distance formula that you've seen before, which is just going to be the radius of the circle. What's going on here is we've seen circles before, and here is our center. And this is going to be h, k right there. And it's the set of all points that go out to x, y, and it's the same distance the entire time. So what that means is we use the distance formula, which tells us that r is going to be equal to the square root of those two things squared. And when I say those two things, I mean going over this distance and up this distance. So this distance right here, the horizontal distance, is going to be the change in x. So that's going to be x minus h, and you square it. And then you're going to add the change in height, which is going to be y minus k squared. So what you end up with when you square both sides is r squared is equal to x minus h squared plus y minus k squared. And you need to write it like this if you want to get the whole circle. If you write it like this, the top one, you only get the upper half of the circle. You need to get both up and top and bottom. So what would the equation for a circle with center at negative 4, 5 and radius 4 be? Well, you just get to use the formula, and that's going to be x minus negative 4 squared plus y minus 5 squared is equal to 4 squared. This 4 goes from right there, and this 5 goes here. You subtract it, and then you get this x value, which goes right there. And when you simplify it, you end up with x plus 4 squared plus y minus 5 squared is equal to 16. So if you have the center and the radius of a circle, you're pretty much done when you're writing the formula. So how do you go about sketching a circle if you're given an equation? Well, you can get the center immediately. The center is going to be negative 2, 1. The most common mistake would be making it 2, 1, but it's negative 2, 1. So the center is going to be right here. And then the radius is the square root of 16, so it's 4. So then go over 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, up 4. I'm just going in the cardinal directions, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then down 1, 2, 3, 4, right here. And then take a minute and make a nice curve. I like using the highlighter because it makes, it makes it a little easier, but you get a nice circle just like this. So the last thing you can be given is a circle not in the proper form or the standard form for a circle. How do you graph it? Well, you need to turn it into the, quote, nice, easy to use form. And the way we're going to do that first is we're going to rearrange and we're going to overall complete the square. So first I rearrange and I get this. That's this term and this term. And then you get y squared minus 4y. That's those two. And then I'm going to move the 12 to the other side. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add half of that squared. So I'm going to add negative 6 over 2 squared to both sides so it doesn't change the overall value. And I'm going to do the same thing for here. So that's going to be plus negative 4 over 2 squared plus negative 4 over 2 squared. I'm doing this for over completion. Yes, I know when you squared it becomes positive. What you end up with is x squared minus 6x plus 9 here plus y squared minus 4y plus 4 equals 12 plus 9 plus 4. And what's nice about this is this factors into x minus 3 squared, which is that value, negative 6 over 2, plus y minus 2 squared is equal to 25. Well, that immediately tells us that the center, hk, is going to be equal to 3, 2. So we can go over to 3, 2 right there. And then it tells us r is equal to 5. So you go over 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 2 to 7, 3, 4, 5, 4, 5. And then you do a nice curve like this. Hey, 
It's not bad. We can do some circle drawing. So that's pretty cool. So what about this? This is almost a circle, but the change is that we haven't squared both sides. You haven't squared both sides on this. But if you do, you're going to add in a little bit more. So you end up with this. So I squared both sides. And then you get x squared plus, sorry, x squared minus, if you put it over on the other side, minus 6x plus y squared is equal to 7. And when you complete the square on this, you get x squared minus 6x plus 9 plus y squared is equal to 7 plus 9. So you end up with x minus 3 squared plus y squared equals 16. And again, this is kind of cool because they're set up to be perfect squares, so kind of like nice radii to graph out. And remember where this comes from right here, that's half of negative 6 squared, and then that's half of negative 6. So that means the center is going to be at 3 comma 0 because that right there is y minus 0 squared. So if you do 3 comma 0, it's right here. And then you have to be careful, these are only the positive values, only the positive values. So it's a radius of 4, and so it's going to be up here and over to 1, 2, 3, 4. It's only the upper half of this circle. There are no positive values because it's the principal root. There's no negative on the outside, so just be careful. So if I graph this, for example, negative of this, negative x squared plus 6x plus 7, that would be the bottom half of the circle. So you square it to get what the overall shape is, but then you have to remember this is just the upper half upper half of the circle. So the next type of conic section we look at is an ellipse, and it's the set of all points whose distances from two given points, called the foci, that's these two right here, foci 1 and foci 2, have a constant sum. So what that means is that p plus q is going to be equal to the same thing down here, r plus s, all the way around. And then what you call v1 and v2, these are the major axes, so it goes out from the center here. The major one's the bigger one, and the minor axis, V3, V4, right there. And then F1 and F2 are called the foci. So that's what an ellipse, the definition is. So we're not going to work out the formula for this. We can do that in class. But the formula you end up with is this. In general, an ellipse is of this form right here, of this form. So if you have the center, the vertices on the horizontal axis, what that means is you go right and left A, so right and left, so side to side here, and then here you go up and down B. So A goes side to side from the center, and then B goes up and down from that K value. And the foci are C units from the center. So this is, this is a block of text here that you're going to need to go back and forth from just to construct these formulae. So how does this work here? How does this work? Well, this is given in the nice ellipse format. The key here that I like to emphasize is that it needs to equal 1. If it doesn't equal 1, you need to divide to make it equal 1. So how do you go about graphing this? Well, first of all, the center is going to be at 2, negative 3. That comes from this 2 and this negative 3. You're subtracting a negative 3. So what are the vertices going to be? The vertices are going to be 0, negative 3 and 4, negative 3. And you get that because first, you know that this is a squared right here. So you can go back up and look at this formula right here. A is underneath the x and B is underneath the y. So A is equal to 2 based on that value. And then here, B is equal to 3. So what's going on here is that you know that, you know that this value right here is going to be h. That's this value right here. And this is k right there. You know that that's just going to be h minus a, and that right there is going to be h plus a. So that's 2 minus 2, which is 0, and 2 plus 2, uh, which is 4, and then the negative 3 comes from there. So the other vertices, because there's four of them, these are the outside ones, are going to be 2, 0, and 2, negative 6. And that comes from, you know that this 2 is where that 2 comes, uh, the 2 is right there. But then you get negative 3 plus or minus 3. So negative 3 plus or minus 3, which is the B value, which is that one right. So negative, negative 3 plus 3 and negative 3 minus 3. So you have those three vertices and the center. And this gives you a very, very good idea of what this looks like. So the center is going to be at 2, negative 3. And you know the foci, sorry, the vertices are going to be 0, negative 3, and 4, negative 3, and 2, 0, and 2, negative 6. So you actually have a pretty good idea of what this looks like immediately. You can draw a nice little ellipse like this. Remember, they're not straight. Draw those curves like this. The last thing you can find are the foci. And remember, 
the foci going back up here are C units from the center on the major axis, which is the bigger axis. So we know that A was two on this and B was equal to three. So C squared is gonna be four, the absolute value of four squared minus nine, sorry, not nine, so three squared like that. So you end up with C squared is equal to 16 minus nine, which is, uh, sorry, four, four, not four, it's two squared here, sorry. This is supposed to be right here. 2 squared, so it's not 16, it's going to be the absolute value of 4 minus 9, which is 5. So C is equal to the square root of 5, and that is C units from the center on the major axes. So what that means is the major axis is right here, the longer one in this case. So this first foci is going to be up here, and that's going to be at 2 comma negative 3 plus root 5, like that. And then this one right here, foci 2, is going to be 2 comma negative three minus root five, like that. So just remember what I recommend is that you write out the values for all these things first. There's a lot of them. So in this case, H is gonna be negative one, K is going to be three, A is gonna be the square root, there's five, and there B is going to be four. You can find out all the values and just plot them. So this is a good practice one along with C. Another thing you're gonna to have to be able to do is take something that is not in the proper form that is an ellipse and turn it into an ellipse. So the way this is gonna work is you're gonna to have to do some very careful completing the square. So I'm gonna take this and put it over there. So that equals negative four. So I have nine X squared plus 36 X plus four Y squared minus eight Y is equal to negative four. And the added kind of tricky thing is you need to factor this and factor this. And the way you need to do that is factor out the 9, and you get this plus 36x, it's not 36, 4x right there, 4x, and then you get plus 4 if you factor out y squared minus 2y equals negative 4. So you're going to complete the square here, so you're going to need to add 2 squared, so you add 4, but if you're adding 4, it's actually you're adding 36 to both sides because that 4 is inside the parentheses and then you add one here, it's negative two over one squared, but then you have to add four to both sides because it's inside the parentheses. What this becomes is nine times x plus two squared plus four times y minus one squared, which is great, and when you do this all out on the other side, this equals 36, but it needs to equal one over here, so you divide everything by 36, and you get x plus two squared over nine over 36, so it's gonna be four, plus y minus one squared over nine, right there, is equal to one. And now you can extract all the information you need. You know that h is equal to negative two, k is equal to one, a is equal to two, and b is equal to three. And then you can use all this information the same way we did before to find out what this looks like. You've got the center and the minor and major axes, vertices, um, and then you can graph the foci and you graph this over here. I'll let you do that. So the last thing you can do over here is be given the vertices of an ellipse and then find the equation. So when you do this, you're gonna draw a rough sketch. Sketch. So what's this gonna look like? Well, zero, two, we'll put it right there. And then we'll put, uh, where's the other one here? Zero, two, so eight, two. So that's zero, two. And then eight, two is gonna be right here. And then let's do the other two, you get four, five. So up here is four, five and then the other one is gonna be four, negative one, which is right here. It doesn't have to be perfect. But what this tells you then is that the center is gonna be right here in the middle. That's the center, and that center therefore is gonna be four comma two. So H is equal to four, and K uh, is equal to two. And then what are the two radiuses here? The long one here, here's the long one. It goes from zero all the way to four, uh, so you end up with a is equal to 4 and then the smaller one goes from 2 to 5 So b is equal to 3 so what you end up with therefore is x minus 4 squared over 4 squared and then you get y minus k squared so y minus 2 squared over 3 squared and that's just equal to 1 and then you have the equation right there Just takes practice and really focusing on finding these four values and just using the formula